Oh yeah, she's really starting to look like a sub setup now, guys. Guys, guys, guys. What's going on, you tubulous? EXO coming at you here. Busting through more progress on the good old base build, man. Feels freaking great. Hope you're doing real good too. Thanks for being here, fellas. We are making ports today. That's right, 1218s, baby. Gotta whip up a little something for the bottom ported chamber of our band pass. It's gonna be a huge 57 inch port, well, width wise, and I'm thinking interchangeable. Why not, right? When fine tuning comes, it's super handy being able to swap out different ports to find that sweet spot, especially after the cabin plays an influence on things. Here's what I'm thinking. Because there's 150 inches now from the front to the back, those two solid boundaries just barely fit a 22 hertz quarter weight. 22 and a half to be exact, but luckily the front port still just so happens to be half that at 75 inches apart from the rear port, which just so happens to be the quarter wavelength of 45 hertz the exact tuning of this front opening not too bad huh a perfect octave above the rear aligned as best i could within the constraints of this beast so it should be a decent enough place to start after all that's what testing and tuning is all about right to start out we'll need to fab up some custom brackets for the port inserts up back the port itself will be divided into two sections the bottom section will have a fixed based underneath at 11 inches, and the top section will have a easily changeable length starting at seven inches for now. At 63 cubes net, an 18 inch long port with two inch flares should be mighty fine to work with. So without further ado, let's head over to the abrasive saw, get cutting some metal. to plot and hardware, I can't just pick and choose based off even spacing aesthetically. Instead, each hole needs to be marked out manually to avoid any prior screw heads. The bracket will sit flush against the baffle, and luckily it lines up great with the steel tubing beneath it. With some countersunk screws, she'll mount nice and tight. Let's get those holes drilled. Holes are drilled and correctly spaced. Now it's time to countersink them for our larger screws on the side. I always get people poking fun at my methods here, but hey, if it works, it works, right? Just gotta swap over to a bigger bit on the press and start plunging until she's deep enough for the heads. Hey, that kind of rhymed. Brackets are looking good. Got the holes just large enough to fit the taper of a screw down inside. It might not be the full Monty, but at least it's better than a straight flat surface. Just needs a good cleaning before paint now. forward to dry paint and the bottom brackets are ready to go. I want big time accuracy when mounting these bad boys. My port width depends on it, so there's no pulling any punches. Made sure to use the existing frame line of the steel cage to extend out as a guide marker. This is exactly where I need to be. So I do this little trick to avoid things dancing around on me. Small little screws to keep the centers aligned. That's the biggest bugger. If you're not directly centered in the hole, it will pull 
in that direction, but with small little guys first, it's so easy to find that center. Plus it acts kind of like a guide for the big fellas to ride down straight, pretty handy. Holes tapped into the steel, we got ourselves a nice foundation for multiple swaps. To seal the deal though, we gotta take it off the wall all over again and attach some gaskets beneath. This rubber weather stripping makes the job even easier, sealing it off in parallel strips for a bit of a double buffer. I just like to separate the two strands apart to get a wider footprint. <laughs> end of the screw now it's stuck in there oh man i hate when this happens right when you're in the groove of things and bam gotta resort to drilling it out completely what a pain in the butt i think we're making progress this could be good i'm gonna switch it out to a freshie don't want to risk breaking another one let's try this again Tell what's happening. I think we're doing it. I think we're literally drilling through the other screw. Yeah, I know you should never say that to yourself, but dang, this was getting me good. Tried a new drill bit, even more reamer screws. So eventually I just had to remove the bracket altogether to go to town with some fresh carbide loaded up. Well, it's doing something. got through and I went through with the small one so hopefully I can gauge it out bigger and get some threads in there. Whew, man, that was a close call. All right, clutched out on the drill. She's max tension, baby. Bam. Yeah, nice and snug against the walls. Lower mountain brackets are installed. Hey, I'm on a rhyme with those rolls today, huh? Really loving the level of compression on those rubber gaskets. Seals up tight, double layer protection. Now we gotta switch into the actual port panels themselves. Couldn't find any small slivers that fit, so believe it or not, I recycled the wood from my sawhorse bench. It's super high quality, 13 ply Baltic birch, and it's actually from my original batch in Russia from 2019. The ports will join halfway up the three inch baffle thickness, leaving an inch and a half of material to stagger hardware into across the seams. Should be pretty beefy. Can't go wrong with some Harbor Freight stands, man. Makes this a whole new world cutting across. Love it. Looks 
peace and fit. Yep, peace fitting in just fine, but we're not out of the woods yet. I want to add a little flare on the end, and I think I've got a good solution that checks all my boxes. A large wooden dowel, surprisingly strong too. If you take the profile and notch out a section from the center, it creates a convenient little flared end when joined up to a flat panel. Plus, we get the bonus of the roundover on the other side shimming up flush against the vertical braces. It's a win-win, really. The cuts are fairly simple, just got to clamp down some scrap wood on the table saw for guiding the round surface smoothly against the flat table and fence. cuts complete and she's not too bad. The glue will fill up the nooks and crannies so there's no need for perfection. Overall, she's straight. There's just a little spot missing at the end cause the dowel wasn't long enough. Just sistered up another piece then permanently attached them with glue and clamps. Got nice even pressure by using scraps of wood and made sure to give it a couple days to harden before handling. PL Max also dries fully solid so the seams were pretty nice too. Now for fitting back in, there's still some work left to do. Because the new port flare combines the roundover wrapping behind, the existing vertical braces are just sitting there begging for a high five. The port butts in directly against them, but without a quick shave job around the contours, the port won't fit in flush. So I'll take the angle grinder with a fancy wood carving disc and custom fit the roundover to follow the exact curves. That way we can bolt the port right into the braces going all the way across. That cutting disc is no joke either. First time for everything, right? Here goes nothing. should do the trick. Definitely not as intimidating as I thought. Wood carving discs are a blast, man. Blew through that material like nothing. The curves are nice and smooth in most places looking down the line. Of course, they'll need to be hit with the sander, but for now, this profile fits just fine. The braces line up mint around the curves and the radius seems pretty spot on as well. Fitting this closely, however, the next challenge reveals itself right to the side, the angle iron itself. The bracket can't magically overlap a giant round dash so that means we're tunneling through, baby. We'll grab an oscillating saw and start plunging through the thickness of our brackets to insert kind of like a credit card.
fitting like a glove now plops right inside. Actually makes installing the port even easier because it acts kind of like a backstop. Traced out everything in place with a pencil using the brackets themselves as stencils, then drilled out the visible ones over on the bench. The only problem now is getting correct marks on the lowest hole. There's no access anymore. They're literally underneath the round over now. To solve that, I simply traced out the two holes I could access onto a scrap piece of wood and drilled that out first. This copies the unique orientation of the first two holes in relation to the third, making it line up no matter what. Gotta love little tricks like that. Looks like we're almost ready for hardware, folks. Recess the area for washers and nuts. Should be pretty well hidden away in the overall circumference there. I'm digging it. Now the braces just need to be drilled out. Punched some divots into the tubes all scrunched up under the baffle. Had to gauge up to a quarter inch hole so the bolts would fit after drilling. Now this isn't the final hardware, just temporary pins to hold it in place. We're basically done with the lower portion of the port now. Biggest thing left to do is sand everything smooth and paint it. Took my time blocking everything by hand along with the detail sander to knock down the tougher adhesive lines. That stuff smooths out great with 220 grit paper, man. Mm -mm. Joints are tight, glues are cured. That can only mean one thing. Let's get this beautiful old girl painted up and looking spiffy. Beautiful. The port's looking top notch already, fellas. And this is only the bottom section. That means, yeah, we're only 50% done. What the f Everything you just saw needs to be repeated again for the top half that joins up to it. Saved you guys the time and made up another flared panel behind the scenes, fabbed up a new set of upper mounting brackets, and installed them in line going up the walls to match below. Same gaskets, same process, lather, rinse, repeat. It's easy to forget just how much time gets chewed up by the small stuff, kind of like the details you're watching in this episode. It all adds up quick. For instance, like waiting for glue to dry or paint to dry. Ugh. That stuff drives me crazy. Wouldn't it be so cool if you would have a freaking clone following behind you working like a champ? Man, that'd be so crazy, but I'm definitely proud of what I got going on. Just takes me a little longer, that's all. Especially when you gotta repeat dang near everything like these adjustable ports have us doing.
Oh yeah, she's really starting to look like a sub setup now, guys. Take a look at this big old beast of a port, man. She's freaking huge in here, I love it. But we're going for some massive lows, absolute devastation, deep base. That's my preference, man. I love those lows, man. I, I wouldn't have it any other way. So that's why she's as big as it is. Why, I shouldn't say as big as it is, because the bigger the port, technically in port area, it increases your tuning. But this is a nice long port and just wide enough to keep our tuning low at 22 and a half hertz. Oh yeah, that's right. So in combination with this port, the front port in the cabin, it's all gonna have a lot of different variables playing into things. You can never really truly model a sixth order bandpass on the computer. So you gotta start getting your hands dirty in real life to start testing and tuning and fine adjustments. So this whole front piece comes out to adjust that tuning higher or lower to you know, get the sweet spot just where it needs to be when all those variables start playing together. So I'm prepared for lots of testing in order to get this thing right where it needs to be. You can't be afraid of that. I'm also gonna add some additional braces up here in the front. I just didn't do it in this video because I'm gonna do the paint job first, but I got quarter inch steel uh, bent to the exact angle of our baffle in relation to this straight port. So these will fit in right here just to give it some more rigidity across and it'll be another one right here. So we'll get that done. Uh, as the next step comes closer man for the rear wall holy smokes this is all coming together real fast and I'm just loving the way it looks this is all very therapeutic for me so I really enjoy the process almost I'd say more than the playing isn't that kind of weird uh, you wouldn't even think that from a base head but man the construction process it's just it's so therapeutic for me I'm also gonna fix these small gaps on the side created from the thickness of the angle iron plus I gave it a little bit of extra room just for some breathability when the port comes in and out you know what I'm saying I'll end up cramming a whole bunch of this stuff down in there uh, second skin butyl rope it does wonders especially in my last build doing like 161 decibels I put this around the port seams and it was great no air leaks no worries but truly the only exposed part is just that maybe half inch above the angle iron because this is all airtight behind it so yeah we're looking pretty good for today can't go any further because we'll start busting into the next steps which we want to save a whole in-depth episode for you guys know how we love doing these videos if you're curious though about Norfleet the little traveling nomad from the north that sweet little cat that came wandering around here he is doing fantastic clean bill of health we even set him up with a little cat catio what cat catio cat condo underneath our porch and we went fully fledged on that build man osb freaking sub floor and plywood even waterproof flooring and walls and ceiling just in case he has any you know accident squirting around because he's a male after all and he has a fun time i want to take his turn real slow if you're taking a poop or a pee okay fleet let's face it he's like freshly neutered so he still has temptations to be like <laughs> he's starting to mark less and less though so that's good but uh, I didn't want to take any chances. So it's fully waterproof in there, ventilated, heated. It's got its own door, a window, and it has an addition uh, that he can go to the bathroom on, a little outdoor addition. Kind of cool, huh? So I hope you enjoyed today's video, whipping up this nice little double trouble two-part port for adjustability. I really want to be able to fine tune this system right where I want it for those killer lows. It's just my preference, man. I, that's the type of music that I like. I'm having a grand old time building this thing and this really just kind of like bass therapy all the time. I will talk to you in the next video. Ah, this is EXO signing out. Ah!